No Gail. Oh, you left a message on my answer phone. I'm sorry I've not got back to you. I'm very busy at the moment. Yeah, but please carry on. Right. If the person in front of me has a connection with them. Let's put it this way, Amanda. Saying, let's use Freddie Mercury as an example. First person that springs to my mind. And you were sat in front of me and saying, Gail, can you get Freddie to come through? You know, I really need some answers, blah, blah, blah. I would need to prove that I've got Freddie. I would need to give you information that would be probably some of it would be because they're famous you'd know anyway I could go on Google and find out about him do you know what I mean so we would need to kind of like find a way that it's genuine and but if he's coming through with stuff that I don't know about him the person in front of me needs to validate that all I can all I can say to you Amanda is I can try and bit with, with but yeah, but with any mediumship, you can try. And with, with anybody, there's never a guarantee because it's down to the spirit to come of their own free will. We can't force them. In the same way, I couldn't force someone to answer their phone. Well, you know, they might be talking to someone else. Um, I can only try. I'm not the best medium in the world. But that's to say I'm not the worst either. Well, I'm not. You know, my job is to convince you that there is evidence of life after death. And that is why mediums do what they do, to show that there is that. All right, thank you. Bye. Well, that was interesting. That was, let me put that save in my con. That was the BBC. Oh, okay. <laughs> the BBC um, wants to, um, I'm just putting... BBC Amanda. They want me to see if I can connect to a celebrity, a deceased celebrity. And I said, well, really, you need a connection with the star because yeah. why would they come through yeah, to just show blogs? Yeah. You know, would you? You know, if yeah, you were famous, you know, like, leave me alone. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but. They said if they had like a genuine Marilyn Monroe dress in the room or something, then I said, yeah, then you'd have the vibe there. Yeah. Oh. So I need to let you know, uh, Mickey, that the reading is for guidance. Any actions that you do take as a result of the reading are from your own free will. So I can advise you, I can guide you. I'm not here to um, tell you what to do. I want to say that I feel that you've ditched a lot of people along the way and that's not been easy for you. I told you we might need tissues. Um, so, you know, it's not, it's not been easy for you. But, um, and I get you, I know you said you got a babysitter for you. So I was going to say, even if I didn't know that, I was picking up that, that you are a mum, I've got kids around you. And it does feel as though this is kind of, it's a real kind of revelation for you. And I want to ask if there was a point where you thought you would never have kids, because it kind of feels as though this is like a miracle for you. Yeah, I was told I wouldn't have kids naturally. I want to cry. I want to cry. And, yeah, because I just kind of feel, I really felt this was going to be emotional. So yeah, there we go. Um, I'm being shown a lady here who really liked having her nails painted. She doesn't feel sick. She doesn't feel like an old, old lady. So if she, you know, when she's passed into the spirit world, I was, I was kind of say um, early 60s, you know, like either, yeah, is that your nan? Is she, is she kind of early? Your gran, yeah. Okay, so nan, gran, you know, same, <laughs> you know, same person, different word. And, and, I, and the sense of love comes in and also a bit of sadness because I do feel she would have still liked to have been here. I would have liked to have been a great gran. I would have liked to have seen my kids. So this, uh, my grand, great grandkids, because this feels she's gone quite a while ago. Is it 15 years she's gone ago? Nearly. nearly 15 years ago Teddy she talks about Teddy I don't know if she's talking about a child called Teddy or she's talking about the Teddy in association with the child but you, 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 have you got like a teddy bear that's bigger than the child or something because I feel I feel like I'm... oh right thank you I did wonder that right okay yeah and then I kick myself because I think why didn't I just say that yeah. How does that feel, Mickey? Really emotional. Yeah. It made me happy. Yeah. Because that's the one person I wanted to come through. Yeah, your nan. Yeah. So before you even started, you thought. Yeah, I've been thinking about it for days, and that's the one person I've wanted guidance, I suppose, from. Yeah. Just to know everything's alright. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Was well, so that what? You, so what did you think it would be like before you came? 
I thought, Have I'm, you been to a psychic before? No, no, no. I thought I was going to get told off, if I'm honest. Yeah. For all the naughty things you did years ago. <laughs> yeah. But no, it's, it's give me some closure in a way. Yeah. Does that sound silly? Yeah, no, 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 it doesn't sound silly at all. It sounds really beautiful. Yeah. So, let me give you my card. Thank All right, you so you're much. welcome. Welcome. Thank Don't you're making me cry. Yeah. <laughs> I'll give you one of the big cards. There we go. Thank you can't you. lose it. Again. You can go onto the website and um, you can book in any time that you want to. That you see the availability. All thank right. You. She loves you, so you know. Oh, thank you. I'm going to start again. Doesn't issues. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you. See you again. Bye. Speaking to Mickey after the reading, it was really clear how Gail had touched her heart. I was also still in disbelief in Gail's ability to read, not only her son's name, but that she had had fertility problems. Something that, when I'm looking at Mickey, I could never have guessed. It was time to discover more about Gail's psychic past. So when did you first know that you had a psychic ability? Um, yeah, I was quite young. Um, one of the most memorable experiences, I think I said to you the other day, um, well, you weren't filming the other day, were you? Um, was um, being in the park, you know, locally. Um, I, I knew my family, my grandparents and my aunts were over there. In, yeah, in the, the park. park. Several, f several fields away. And uh, I was kind of tugging, I was about seven, and I was tugging my mum, you know, come and, you know, so and so's over there. She's like, don't be silly, you know, they yeah. didn't live anywhere near th that park. And I was so convinced. So, how they, far were they? Like, feel, like 500, 1,000 metres away? Probably, let's think. A couple of football pitches away okay, at least, long, yeah. you know, long, long just way, just little, little dots on the horizon. And sure enough, as we get closer, there was this, you know, incredulity of like, what are you doing here? What are you doing here? And we just didn't expect each other to, um, to be there. Um, <laughs> and again, it was like, how did you know it was us? And they just looked at me and said, Gail, Gail knew, she just, just knew. When I was growing up, as a little girl, I had a very strong feeling that I wanted a brother, I wanted an older brother. And um, I dismissed it and I got to a 12 and my mum told me I had, I was meant to have had an older brother. She had um, had a stillbirth, so she'd gone full term with my brother who was the eldest. And often when I go for readings now, if I go to a medium, they'll say, um, I've got your brother here, you know, and I'll say, okay. But they, they pick babies up as what they would be now, the age they would be I now. I say, yeah, the babies, because yeah. surely they can speak. Or... Yeah, but that's an interesting one, because people do come because they've lost a baby. And I think what people want to know, first of all, that, that, that there's a lot of issues around somebody losing a child and connecting with a psychic yeah. or a medium. They want to know the baby or any spirit has arrived safely into the spirit world. What do the spirits to feedback to you say? Well, there, there's a general idea that, um, and again, talking to other mediums, I'm not convinced there's a heaven, a hell and a purgatory. I'm not convinced of that. I do feel we go into a different dimension. I then think that um, the soul goes on, the spirit, the soul, to further evolve. Why keep coming back for more? I can feel my community and it's a cry. I just want to run away, run away, run away and hide. <laughs> it would be interesting to hear, so then, what you, what you think ha happens after, after death? People say, oh, they can see back onto past lives. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. there's been a few things that have happened that make me think, do you know what? I think I I, I used to be more sceptical of it, mm -hmm. but gradually things have happened that, that I've started to think, yeah. Well, I've met people from my past lives. 
I, I was doing psychic development classes and this guy rang me out of the blue and said, I'm interested in your psychic development. And I was like, I'm not doing it anymore. But I said, I'm always interested to meet people who are into this kind of thing. Let's meet in the pub and have a chat. And I said, maybe we'll do something in the future. So I'm chatting away to this guy I've never met before. And in my, in my head, I'm hearing my guide saying, Tell them about your sword, tell them about your sword. And I said, my guide's saying to me to tell you, to ask you about your sword. And he smiled and he said, I've never been without one. And he said he'd fought in, fought in the Afghanistan and Persian armies. And I turned mm. around and I said, Persia. I went, that's where I know you from. Because I remember having a personal past life of living in Persia. And I can remember it when I was four years old. I can remember the, the blue satin knickerbockers. I can remember, you know, knickerbockers. And I was only so high. I, was, I must have died young. And um, I can remember looking out the palace walls and seeing the merchants coming in. And he was able to verify it all. He verified those details. So he I, too had a past life. Yes, yeah. And I looked at him because I, I recognised him as being my uncle from the previous life. And I said it was all horses. And then he, he came up with some memories because as soon as he sort of like looked at me it triggered something for him and um so yeah that that was quite bizarre yeah very very bizarre okay, bye. how was that one again yeah it was good she was yeah. um i was kind of frustrated it wasn't filmed because it was one of those ones where like she could take everything and i yeah. thought oh fantastic you yeah. know and um, you can get, if you want to go anywhere, just. Oh, where do I want to go? I'll go back in here. Okay. And do you know what was really? I don't know if she told you, but yeah. right at the end, there was this waft of like. To me, it was dog poo. It was like a poo smell. Yeah. To her, it was like wee. Yeah. I was like, where's that come from? That just suddenly came in. And I thought from that, because it went, it came yeah. in and it went. And I said, did any of your relatives, were they incontinent before they passed over? And she yeah. went, yeah. So yeah. her. Nan, I think she was, says, was it ended up in nappies. And oh, I said, yeah. And I said, well, that's what we can smell. I said, yeah. she's come in. So, what a strange thing to yeah. connect with. Yeah, strange. Just yeah, like, yeah. like when you were here, there was a bang. You yeah. know? So, so strange things do happen um, when spirit connection comes in. And yeah. we, were, we were connected with the spirits. Yeah. So, yeah, be prepared. Is it like a good paid job being a psychic in general? Or is this no, the it's the short answer to that. No, okay, yeah. <laughs> Have you seen my house? <laughs> <laughs> Have you seen my clothes? Have you seen my very old car? Um, no, um, the, the only way that you really make money from it is if you become famous. Yeah. And, and the same with a lot of things, God, you know. Yeah. And there, there's a confusion because sometimes I get people accusing me of um, being money orientated, but at the end of the day, it's survival. I, I have a gal I know who would be really good for it, yeah, I think. Cool. But mm -hmm. her mum is Polish German. Right. So I don't know if that what what right. happens with that. What what would happen? Her mum that passed over. Yeah. Would either it would be translated, so yeah. I would get a sensation of what she wants to say. Okay. Or oh, through like the feeling and the touch. Yeah. And the... Yeah, because the sentiment, because the spirits don't always talk words to me. So the point point of being a clairvoyant of seeing stuff is they might show me images and pictures. So what has happened to some psychics is. The language comes through. And they're saying this. They're saying this. Do you yeah. want to hear a really scary story? Yeah. And and um, I don't know if we should really broadcast it or not. But okay. what the hell? Because yeah. I, I, I won't name names. Um, when I did my mediumship training. Yeah. I went to this special centre for it and um, I was downstairs and I'd made friends with this lovely Jewish lady. And she was she was a very outstanding medium. And she came downstairs absolutely white and she said to me, Gail, they have channeled Hitler. So can you imagine? Hmm. And um, who, who, who was trying the, to channel them? The group, the, the, the second, they weren't trying to channel oh. him, but he came through because they opened themselves out. Now Hitler came through talking perfect German, so he wasn't talking English. And there happened to be a girl that channeled him who could speak German, or I don't think he was channeling him, but somebody came through, he came through speaking German, because the medium opens themselves to be the channel, and they can use that, they, they used, um, they'll use their voice. It's very advanced stuff, it's not, not something you would expect in a, in a private sitting. Um, but somebody could speak German and they translated it and it all made sense. What did so, you say? Do you remember? I can't remember, you know. Gosh. Yeah. Now, 
I know what you were thinking, because I was thinking exactly the same thing. If Hitler had come from to a group of my friends, I would have definitely remembered what he had to say. This puts me in a bit of confusion. But regardless, I'm excited that Gail has agreed to give my friend Marta a reading. This is after I double-checked that her mother, who had passed away, would be discernible to Gail, despite never of having spoken English in her lifetime. So I'm just going to do a little mantra in my head. So the mantra I say is, I call my soul to me. I open my heart to receive. Loesh, 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 expand the macabre field. Um, is there a, a, a burner or Bernice name that, that surrounds your family? Can you understand No, that? no, no. OK. She says to me she looks like she's walked straight out of Carnaby Street, and I do wonder if she, she had a connection with Carnaby Street, if she visited there or what, whatever that is. Um, is this your grandmother? Mm -mm. No. So, who is this lady to you? I don't know. <laughs> Can't place her. Okay. Well, she's very, she's very strong in character. Okay. Is there someone in particular you wanted me to contact? Maybe my mom. She passed away. Oh, okay. Let's have a, have a. She blonde like you. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Are there three of you? Three children? Just me, my mum, my dad. OK, was your mum one of three then? Yeah. Right, OK, because she's talking about three children, so she's talking about herself. She wants to tell you that she's out of her pain and suffering, although it's still can, I can still remember it, is what she's saying. Still have a memory of that. Does she think I'm doing OK? She said she will always be proud of you. Um, she can't believe she made you. You know, she's, she's like... Oh, you know, this is the, the most amazing thing I've ever done. Um, and um, that's just going to leave you with that, she said, because uh, we have to watch the time as well. Yeah. <laughs> so how was that, Marta? Uh, yeah, really exciting. I... I didn't think it was, I didn't think it worked that much. <laughs> no, I don't know if it worked. It's, I think I was trying to be really open. When I started making this film, I wanted to take it from the angle where it wasn't going to be some expose. Yeah. It wasn't going to be like, oh, I'm just trying to find, <laughs> trying to just prove her as a psychic. I wanted to just do the life of a psychic and how life's affected her being a psychic. But at the moment, like, I'm finding it difficult. Do you think she was, because she was nervous herself, maybe, because she knew we know each other? I then... think so. I think she was more nervous, definitely. There's definitely, she was more nervous, but... I do worry a bit because I was a bit like, oh. Because even when she described the first person. Who was the first person? I don't know. I mean, it does, didn't like make me doubt anything. I find it, I found really, I think the best experience was just to meet her. And it's so, it's quite amazing that she lives that life and believes in it and like, you know, does it. I find her character so amazing and like she's really lovely and like she, didn't make me feel so, yeah, bad yeah, about anything. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's no, more I agree. That, that, you know, I kind of like appreciate what she does and yeah. how she like spends so much time thinking about other people's lives. Despite the mixed response to Marta's reading, I was moved by her analysis of Gail. I started to notice a sense of sisterhood in Gail's work, within the way she helped women with their worries and problems and also gave reassurances about lost loved ones. I decided the only way for me to truly understand how I felt about Gail's work was to experience it firsthand. Just one more. Okay. I'm, I'm just going to go with what I'm being shown, and I, f I do feel I'm looking out to quite a nice um, garden. And it feels as though there's a link, um, whether it's your granddad or in the family in general, with what I would call almost like a stately home, because I look out and it's got very manicured gardens yeah, in front of I it. Mean, okay, so it's my very, grandparents did have a nice garden. It's very nice, it's very well kept. So um, it feels as though this man likes things to be orderly, everything to be in a line. And he feel, it feels he wants you to be orderly and organised. Yeah, yeah. And it's as though you've tried. <laughs> he's laughing because yeah, he's yeah. saying, you do try, but some Sometimes he said you're rushing around too much and your shirts are all over the yeah, place. Yeah. Well, but you do try this one's to correct. Keep them in an orderly fashion. And I'm also being shown somebody who would have worn a scarf around their 
neck, but as in not woolly scarf, but um, um, you know the, 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 top, the neckerchief type thing. Okay, I can't work out if this is male or female because as I'm looking, I'm only. I really like Gail. I really want to take this bit of information. And I want but so far, it's not really relating to me. Some other names don't make immediate sense. You may have to check with your family. It sounds like a Jerry or Jer Jeremy or Jeremiah kind of name that comes in as well. OK, we may be going way The only way people way. I know who have passed away were called yeah. Albert and Tom. Um, are you about six or... No, you're older when he's passed, aren't yeah. you? But he's remembering you around six and seven. Okay. And then he's kind of... Those are the precious moments. The, the years of innocence is what he's talking about. Okay. He's also talking about connections with steam trains. He's kind of showing, like, railways. And, so yeah. I don't know where he lived. There steam was trains? Steam railway or Not so sure like about that, this one some either. Sort of connection that comes in. He said that you will eventually live by the sea because he said there is okay. a stronger connection coming well, for you. Well, I to live in Los Angeles. Oh, well. Well, I don't know if it'll be Los Angeles, uh, <laughs> but you know, it's, he said you, you, you'll be by the sea. I always wanted to ask them about me being gay. I never told them. I always wanted to ask them if, what they thought about that. I think he knew. Yeah? Yeah. Both of them, do you think? Or? I think so. Yeah. Because they never said anything. He's like, he's winking at me, he's going... It's not, it wasn't our job to say something and... I feel he's quite accepting, funnily enough, you know. It I'm not entirely funny. sure which granddad Gail's with. Do you think this is the uh, writing granddad or the... Or... Let me have a look. Was one of them a little bit racist? Because it feels as though it could have been worse. Um, <coughs> I wouldn't know if... Well, I wouldn't know if they were. They wouldn't say it in front of me. What I'm nice. trying to say to you yeah. is if you'd have turned up and said I'm dating a black person or something like that, oh, they I might see. have had more to say about that than if you were dating another man. Oh, okay, I yeah. just get an it could have been worse feeling and maybe, I, I don't yeah. know. Um, Speechless. <laughs> I was on my way with Gail to a spiritual centre, where she attends a weekly support group. I knew after my somewhat idiosyncratic reading, I had to question Gail about the doubts I'd been having. I couldn't stop thinking about when would be the right time to ask. And you, you can get really down um, with the work I do. It's very isolating. And also, there's nobody really to offload to. You know, you're the one that people are offloading <laughs> on and then because I don't have family nearby and friends are sort of scattered and stuff and you don't want to keep moaning to your friends so I call it a coffee and a moan. I like to go for a coffee and a moan. As Gail goes into her private support group in the spiritual centre next door, a woman called Shelley who owns the shop joined offers to give me a tour round. A lot of people do buy oracle cards because they, you can just pick one card. Yeah. Say every day you could just shuffle, just feel your intention and then just pick one card. And that card will help you answer a question. Yes, yeah. exactly. It will, it will guide you. Yeah. It's, it's a gui guidance. Tarot, oracle, it's all guidance. Yeah. What is that bell, that bell for? Uh, which one? The bell? Yeah. Oh, well, no, that is actually a candle snuffer. Oh, yes. to take out Yes, oh, but it's just got nice. the, the sign on it of the oh, pentagram. Nice. And the, yes, this is a quite a... Can be used a pagan symbol, yeah. um, you know. So that's so people, about. Don't people associate it with the Antichrist? Is that... Well, this is the this is the unfortunate. I'll tell you about that. Yeah. See what it is is, I don't want to do it, but basically, um, it's if it depends which way the point is. Oh, uh, okay. So the point shouldn't be down. Yeah. The point should be up. Oh, uh, okay. So. Um, so it's all depending on yes, which way it is. but the thing is. It's actually, it is earth, fire, air, water and spirit. And, and that is the from. true way. And some people will work with the dark. Yeah. You know, we, we like to work always be light. in the light. Yeah, of course. The thing know. is, you've always got two sides to everything. Yeah. We all have a, a, a light you part and a dark. Who do, who do dark? Who um, who I steer them? clear, to you be honest clear. with you. <laughs> I absolutely I love Shelley. Yeah. She's a queen. Exist, her positivity, her energy, her passion, energy. it's really captivating. Yeah, Why couldn't the rest of the world be a Shelley? Absolutely, yeah. As we were talking, <laughs> the owner of the spiritual centre next door arrived and spoke to me about Shelley's transformation for the spiritual community. And seeing him leave is completely different. Shelley, for instance, yeah. she couldn't leave her bedroom. Yeah. She drove into this car park three times and drove out again and she didn't have the guts to get out of the car. 
Okay. And then she came in one day, the minute she came in, she burst into tears, and then she started really working on herself and accepting all the healing and all of that. If I'd have told her that she'd be running the shop next door, she would not have yeah. believed me. She I was convinced no that this psychic world, yeah, psychic I mean, community, had the power to change lives. Yeah. But whether this power came from something otherworldly, rather than the power of human openness and human empathy, I was still unsure of. I knew on the way home, it was finally time to question Gail on the doubts I've been having. I have to be honest with you, Gail. Some of you asked me, uh, you know, about when that, the, what was my reading like. Yeah. I, you, I did look through it and I didn't really take too much of it. Oh, really? And, and what's, and no, 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 and it's just like, how, how do you respond to that when people say that? Right. Because I'm only, I'm only asking that question because yeah. I know people will ask me. Yeah. And I don't I want the answer to come from your mouth. Marta, at the time, I wasn't as connected with her as I would have liked to have been. I think, to be honest with you, I was quite tired with when I did both of those readings. Because remember I said I had been at quite a low ebb. But just because I always thought up with, with my granddad not say... Why, why would he talk about steam trains? Why wouldn't he, oh, my disorganised room, why wouldn't he say something more to me? That's what I was thinking about as well. Well, this is it. People have these expectations and um, I can't control, you know, no medium can control what they come through with and some of them come through with um, more pro profound stuff, yeah. you know. Um, but what they'll try and show you, as I said, the purpose of mediumship is the survival of life after death. Yeah. So, do, you ever, do you ever doubt your own ability? Of course, of course I do. Um, do you ever doubt it? It's just your imagination. So. Of course, of course. Yeah. And then it's not until somebody says, well, yeah, I can take that. Yeah. You know? I, can, I can take that. And, and as I said, I've had the same with reading. Sometimes I've come out of it and thought, hmm, OK, that's, that wasn't the best reading I've had. Um, you know, it can vary. Um, I might not be the reader for you, Nick. Yeah. You know, at the end of the day. Would you like to any que ask any questions about your life at all or, or anything you want to know? Will I... Something happened to me all when I was younger, basically. Right. And I was wondering if I would ever be able to move on from that event. OK, um, I've, I've got a rough idea of the something. I don't really want to vocalise yeah. it because I feel it's something very uncomfortable for you. And um, in my heart, I, I'm going to say... Um, your, your battle is understanding why. Mm. Does that make sense? Why? The, and this person that did this to you didn't just do it to you either. OK, so that may be a bit of a shock for you. <laughs> so I don't, I don't feel that. I feel that... And I feel male. Am I mm. correct? Yeah, it feels like a male person. And OK, I'm going to say I feel it was abusive towards you in a not particularly nice way. Mm. You know, I'll, I'll be honest with you. Um, I've tried a similar path myself. And abusers don't just abuse one person. It's very unusual. Mm. It would be very unusual to abuse one person. So I feel that there is a bit of a trail. I will, I will be honest with you. I, I, the, the person that abused me, I sat on that for 30 years. 30 years. And then something happened and I had um, PTSD. I started getting panic attacks. Mm. It started coming back in. Basically, somebody had put a picture of them on Facebook. And I was like, oh, mm. you know. And it triggered everything off that I tried to bury for 30 years. I then decided, a bit like the magician, I've taken my power back. Was this going to control me for my whole life? I called Women's Aid. Mm. And through Women's Aid, um, I was able to get some counselling, um, talk about it, and they said, do I want to report it? And I thought about it, and I thought, this person's probably hurt other people. I'm sure it's not just, not just me. And um, I did report it. I spent two hours in a police suite 
telling them everything, he's on police record. Yeah. So if anything happens again, and that was my satisfaction, that was my justification, that other people would be warned that this was a dangerous person. Mm. And the main thing was I was believed. Yeah. And that, I think, is very important for a survivor. So you make sure nothing is clinging to your aura? No. My time with Gail had come to a close. Before I left, she decided that it should be smudged, a practice that removed any negative spirits or energies from my aura. It was like spiritual attachments. Yes. So. Okay, so oh, okay. you might want to just close your eyes for a second and just kind of breathe in. As we're dealing with past traumas, lost loved ones, and a lack of knowledge of what the afterlife holds for us, Gail provides reassurance and guidance to those needing it most. What was most poignant was that when people entered Gail's living room, they always left feeling better about themselves. So, it doesn't really matter if it's real or not. The spiritual service that Gail provides gives people hope for tomorrow. And you know what? That's a beautiful thing.